I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Hey there, everybody. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. I got a lot to cover today. I'm going to look at a few different things, maybe some uh, baseball for sure, some football for sure, some golf for sure, some DFS strategy for sure. So hang on for the ride and let's see where this takes us because it's going to go all over the place, but uh, I will get you all the information that you need to win, whether it's daily or season long or baseball or football or maybe a millionaire maker in golf. Okay. First of all, let's talk quickly about fantasy football. There was a huge trade yesterday, and the trade was, the trade was, Brandon Cooks goes, that's right, he goes to the Rams. The Rams get Brandon Cooks and a fourth round pick from the Patriots in exchange for a first and sixth round pick. And now they're saying they're trying to trade up for a quarterback. I don't know. We'll have to see what's going to happen there. But let's break down this move. Brandon Cooks has been playing with uh, Jared Goff right now in the offseason. They're creating a connection out there in California. Last year, if I'm not mistaken, I think that the Rams tried to acquire Cooks, but it didn't happen, so they went and got Sammy Watkins. Cooks is a perfect fit for this offense. See, you already have Cooper Cup, and you already have Robert Woods. You can't have a guy who demands targets, and luckily, Cooks is not that kind of guy. When he played with the Saints, even when he played with the Patriots, this is a guy who gets like six, seven targets a game. You don't don't have to give him 16, right? So Sean McVay is going to use Cooks properly. He's going to give him, I would say, six, seven targets a game. Cooks gets about three to five catches a game. But a couple of them can be big, right? Maybe over the middle, some slants, a couple of deep routes. They will figure out ways to use him because I think you can use him better than Sammy Watkins. Sammy may be a faster runner. That may be true. But I think Cooks is a better route runner. I do. I think he's a better route runner. Because Sammy is more athletic and he just goes after it and he makes a play. Cooks is more of a technician. And I think it's going to fit really well in what the Rams are doing. The Rams are built to win now. You're getting Sue. You're getting Cooks. You're trying to win now. I respect that. I really do. Fantasy-wise, I think this drops Cooks from like a second-round pick probably to like a fourth or fifth-round pick. Maybe I want... I don't know if I want Cooks as my second receiver. I don't know if they feel good about that. I really don't. Cooper Cup is the go-to guy in this offense, and Robert Woods is nothing to sneeze at. He was excellent at times. So I I think that Cooks is more of a wide receiver three, and I know that sounds crazy because he's super talented, but I don't see him being a one. I just don't picture that. And I think anybody who takes him as a one is going to regret that they do that. Now, speaking of regret, the Rams better sign him to a long-term deal. Otherwise, they're going to regret this trade. You don't give up a first-round pick not to sign this guy. You went after Sammy Watkins. You didn't sign him. That was a problem. You have to go. If you make trades, sign the guy. That's why you're doing this. This is not a rental. This is a commitment. For the Patriots, I'll say this. If Tom Brady wanted Brandon Cooks, he'd be there. I don't think Tom Brady ever really gelled with Brandon Cooks. I think they had a lot of miscommunications, and I don't think that Cooks was ever a Brady kind of guy. Brady loves throwing to Edelman, loves throwing to Hogan. He's found a rapport with Malcolm Mitchell. They've got Philip Dorsett that they brought in last year. They have Cordero Patterson. Cooks is a really great receiver, but I don't know if he's necessary. The Patriots will find a guy. They always do. I would have told you Bryce Butler would have been a good fit there, but he ends up with the Cardinals. Now, if the Patriots make a move for a quarterback, I'll be a little shocked to see that because I don't think that New England's going to move up to two. But, I mean, it's possible. 
I think the Patriots want to make a move in this draft to get up. That's for sure. And now they have the ammunition to do that, right? So I think maybe with Denver, that might make a good move there. Getting up to number five, I could see that being a possibility. I don't think it happens with the Giants. I really don't. But look, New England doesn't do anything capriciously. It's all well thought out. They know what they want to do, and they'll make a play. You just have to trust Bill Belichick. He's smarter than you are. He's smarter than I am. Smarter than Vegas. He's the smartest man ever. No, I'm just joking. But, I mean, he knows what he wants to do. All right, another piece of information fantasy football-wise. Robbie Anderson, the felony charges were dropped. I'm not telling you Robbie Anderson's not a knucklehead. He's a knucklehead. But he's not going to be a knucklehead in jail. So, Jet fans, you've got Pryor, you've got Anderson. Your team is looking a little bit better with Isaiah Crowell. The Jets might be a very interesting offense and a very underappreciated offense. I like Josh McCown a lot. So long as he's there, I think the Jets can be very relevant and keep a lot of games close this year. All right, looking at some fantasy baseball for a second. So first of all here, Shohei Otani, three-run jack yesterday. Should I pick him up in my leagues? Only if you play in daily leagues. Not in not in weekly leagues, because how many games is he going to get each week? One? Two? No. Is he going to hit a home run every week? If he did, you know, more power to you. I don't see that. So I do like Otani, but I like him in a league where I can play him on the nights that he plays, when daily moves leagues. Now, a lot of leagues aren't like that, but check and see if yours are. And if yours are, I have no problem with you using Otani the two nights a week he plays. Maybe he gets a home run, maybe he doesn't. But in a mixed league, I need a guy who's going to play five, six days a week. The more at bats, the better. Okay? Piece of information for you that I think you guys will want to know. Um, Yoan Moncada is putting a lot of pressure on himself this year. And I'm telling you this, I have an inside source who knows Moncada very well. And I'm telling you, I think he's going to end up dropping in the batting order. When this guy's going 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, I don't think the top of the order is where he needs to be. I know the White Sox like him there because of his speed. I wonder, though, with all the pressure, is he going to be hitting 212 by the end of April? If that's the case, Moncada is going to have to go down in the order to protect this guy from himself. Because, look, this is not physical. This is mental. He's physically a marvel, but mentally he's a knucklehead. So once again, we've got these knuckleheads that we have to worry about. So just watch and see if Otani goes, I mean, sorry, if, if Moncada goes lower in the batting order. All right, as later in the week, I'm going to do a fab uh, podcast so you guys have that. There are some players out there. And look, in baseball, you only see a guy pitch once and maybe you forget about him. Jake Junis, pretty good start. Tyler Molly, pretty good start. Keep yourself a pad somewhere, and when a guy does something, write it down so you say to yourself on the weekend, when I do my moves, I have the names of the guys that I like, but I know that it's scout over the course of this, this, these few next few days. I'll get my waiver wire stuff out. I know Sean does, Ronis does. We give you guys to look at, and that's very, very important Okay, as we move forward. The Royals-Tigers game was postponed due to cold weather. Can somebody tell me why we're playing baseball in March? Please, why not shorten the season? Why do we have to make the season longer? Seriously. It's the only word I have for it. Seriously. March 29th, too soon. Why not start the year April 16th? And let's end this bad boy in early September. Because baseball goes until late October, sometimes November, or right around November. It's ridiculous. It's a long season. Guys are playing in frigid temperatures. You want to be playing in Detroit? I don't think you do. And think about this. And I know a lot of people don't think about this. And you really need to in fantasy. Vlad Guerrero Jr. From the DR, right? You think he knows what it's like to play in frigid temperatures? You think he knows what it's going to be like to play in Detroit when it's like minus three? See, guys from warm weather countries where a lot of baseball guys come from, they don't play in cold weather. Therefore, they don't do well in those months. They do really well June, July, August, September when it's warm. But, you know, April and May, they can't feel their hands. They've never been this cold in their lives. Trust me when I tell you from someone who lives in a tropical climate where it's always hot. When I go to New York, when I visit my wife's family in New York, I'm freezing my butt off when it's 60. I'm like, oh my God, I need a jacket. 
Everybody in New York is like wearing shorts. I'm freezing because I'm used to 80. Now imagine if I was from the Dominican Republic. I'd be freezing at like 70. So think about that too when you're picking guys up and when you're looking at guys who are rookies and wondering, why aren't they doing so well? Well, they're not doing so well because they haven't adjusted yet. All right, new topic. Today is one of the first days, and there have been, I, I, I want to take that back. There have been more than first a few days. But DFS-wise, okay, this is a day where you've got the double slate. Okay, you've got a date, an early slate and a late slate. So the early is the 12 o'clock Nationals Braves, 1 o'clock is Rays Yankees, Phillies Mets, 2 o'clock is Orioles Astros, Dodgers Diamondbacks at 3, Indians Angels at 4, Twins Pirates play at 6, which just is ridiculous because you can't use them pretty much anywhere. And then you've got five games at night, White Sox, Blue Jays, Mariners, Giants, Cardinals, Brewers, Rangers, A's, and Rockies Padres. So let me share some wisdom with you. Firstly, you don't have to play every slate. I do not play early slates. I can't concentrate on it. I'm taking the kids to school. I'm running errands. I'm writing articles. I'm doing podcasts. I can't focus on it. I don't play early slates. I will play late slates. I don't love five game slates. They're okay, not special. Usually I like late, like, and then there are certain days like tomorrow where there's only three night games. So here's what I tell you. I tell you the following. Don't be afraid not to play. Don't be afraid not to play. We're not all degenerates. We don't have to play every slate because it's there. Sometimes the best course of action is backing off and not playing every slate. I'm not telling you not to play today. I'm just saying play the slate that's more convenient for you. Play in the day, play at night. I don't play day slates because I'm not prepared and I'm not here to light money on fire. I want to take the time. I want to go do the research. I want to use the optimizer. I want to read the articles. I want to do, do all of my preparation and then I'll get my, I want to see this, the lineups. I want to figure out my stacks and then I go all in. But I'm not rushing anything just to piss money away. I don't do it that way. So I encourage you. What is the moral of this story? The moral of the story is play when you're able, not because it's there. If it's there, who cares? If you're going to lose, I want you to win. How do you win? Scout Fantasy Sports. Go to the Optimizer. Read our articles. Fuego's been hot. Jaguar Lou's been hot. Rob Garriak knows what he's talking about. Runner does a great job. My visionary plays on fire. Fire. Who did I give out yesterday? Freddie Freeman and Marcelo Suna. Did you play them? If you did, you probably won money. There was one point yesterday I was a big, big, and then it all came down to earth. So annoying. I was sitting there. I was like, oh my God, I'm winning everything. I'm hundreds. I put it. I literally played $9 yesterday. At one point, I was up $745. That's how good it was. My lineup was on fire. And I put up 232 points. It wasn't enough. It was good, but it wasn't enough. Crazy, right? All right. So let me give you my baseball visionary plays. Okay. I'm going to give you my visionary plays. And then I'm going to talk a little DFS golf. So my visionary plays in baseball today. Firstly, I'm going to look at the game in Oakland. I hate Doug Fister like poison. I hate Doug Fister, and I love me some Matt Olson. You know I love Matt Olson, and let me tell you something: you always want guys who can hit multiple home runs. Matt Olson could jack three tonight. Wouldn't shock me. Probably won't. But if he went three home runs and seven RBIs, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a shock face on. I'd be like, "That's Matt Olson for you." I'm locking him in visionary style against chump change Doug Fister. Then. When you've got some crappy pitchers, and we got some crappy pitchers in the slate, I pay up for hitting. And I pay up for Nolan Arenado. Okay? There's so many bad pitchers, nobody here really stands out to me. So I want to get the best hitters in my lineup. And the best hitter on this whole slate may be Nolan Arenado. That's how good he is. Playing the Padres, Clayton Richard stinks. 
It's a soft tossing lefty. I don't like soft tossing lefties against Nolan Arenado. I love Arenado and I'm locking him in visionary style. All right, so those are my DFS plays. Now, let's get to the following. It's the millionaire maker on DraftKings. Firstly, I got to congratulate Sean Childs who did an amazing cheat sheet. Amazing cheat sheet from Sean Childs. You can find it at scoutfantasysports.com. So let's talk about the millionaire maker. I got to tell you guys, There's 205,000 people in this bad boy. First place is a million, but then it just drops off the cliff. It's like 150, 100, and then 50,000. So it's it's good, but really it ain't great. Okay, so here, if you do the 20 entry max, by the way, first place is 50,000, right? But in the golf millionaire, that would be fourth place. But listen to the difference. I could put in 150 entries into the Millionaire Maker. And the other one, I can only put 20. Where do I have a better chance to win? And now I know there's more people playing in the the, the 20 entry max, but they can only put in 20 entries. The big problem is multi-entry. It is the curse of DFS. Because here's what happens. Now, I'm not really good at math. So I'm going to have to get out of the calculator. One moment, please. 150 times 20 is $3,000. I promise you there will be multiple degenerates out there who drop $3,000 trying to win a million. And let me tell you something. If I had that kind of money, I would drop $3,000 to win a million and give myself 150 lineups. But I don't have that kind of disposable income. I'm married with two kids and I'd like to stay married. And my kids have to go to college one day. Now you could say, well, Dr. Roto, if you win the million dollars, you could pay for your kid's education. But if I lose, that that 3,000 is going to have to go for my divorce attorney because my wife will kill me. So I'm not dropping three Gs on this. First of all, play what you can. Now, next, let's talk about some of the players. Okay. You need to be different if you're playing the millionaire maker. You need to be different. But you can't be stupid. Now, there's very, very, very soft pricing on DK. Now, let me show you very quickly. I'm just going to hit people. Here, click names. Phil Mickelson, Ricky Fowler, Justin Rose, um, Matt Kuchar. Right? I'm just going with people you know. Let me throw out a couple more guys that everybody knows. Uh, I'll go with uh, maybe Zach Johnson. Right? And I'll go... Oh, I don't want to do Zach Johnson. I'll do it. Henrik Stenson, because everybody loves me some Henrik Stenson. And I'll throw in Pat Perez. Look at that. I did this lineup in five seconds. I've got Mickelson, Fowler, Rose, Kucher, Stenson, Perez. Oh my God, what a dream lineup. That's the problem with these tournaments. The pricing is so soft, everybody loves their players. Why do they do that? They want you to spend more money. Now, dare to be different. Don't you think a lot of people will have this lineup that I have? Phil, Everybody knows Phil, Ricky, we watch the commercials, Justin Rose, hottest golfer out there, Matt Kuchar, safe and he does Skechers commercials, Henrik Stenson, 7800, this guy should be $3,000 more. So let's take out Pat Perez, right? And let's put in Jimmy Walker, for example. Now your team is slightly different because Jimmy Walker will be very low owned. And that's going to be the key to winning a million dollars. Everybody's going to have the same four guys you do. It's what you do with the bottom two players that's going to set you apart. You've got to find the two guys that you can afford who will be top 20 players. So, do I think Phil could be top 20? Can can Phil win? Yes. Can Fowler win? Yes. Can Justin Rose win? Yes. Can Stenson win? Yes. 
Can Kuchar win? Probably not, but he could be top 20. Jimmy Walker, can he win? Probably not, but he could be top 20. This team gives me at least a chance to compete. I'm not sure I'm going to win with this team, but it gives me a chance to compete. Because let me tell you something. If you don't have six guys in the top 20, you are not going to be my millionaire buddy. And I need a millionaire buddy because I need loans. But I'm telling you, you're not going to be my millionaire buddy if you don't have guys, six guys in the top 20. That's what you need to do. Dare to be different. Dare to be a little contrarian. But don't be stupid. Okay? Don't give me a guy, right, that you've never heard of before. Okay? This is, don't bring in um, Miyazato. What's his name here? You, 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 Yusaku Miyazato. Okay? I don't know if he's ever played first appearance in the Masters. Probably not going to be good. That's a bad life decision. But Weisberger's played the Masters before. I don't like him. He's a choker, but he's played there before. He could go top 20. You're going to have to be different. That's the way to win a million. Give me four guys who can be in the top 10. And the other two guys on your team better be top 20. And you have a chance. And most importantly, you better have the winner. You don't have the winner. You ain't winning. You need to have the winner on your team. So I want you to go to scoutfantasysports.com right now. And I want you to check out Sean Childs' cheat sheet on the Masters. Check out all our Masters information. And I hope and I pray that you win the million. Well, first of all, I hope I win the million. But in case I don't win the million, I hope you win the million. Because it's never a bad thing to have another rich friend. All right, it's time now to t- put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. If you're playing in daily, whether it's PGA or MLB or NBA, I wish you much luck. This is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!